Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome to my channel, Ask Jimmy Smith. Uh, I'm super excited to be talking to you about this topic today uh, because this is how to make your first $10,000 as an Amazon seller uh, selling on Amazon FBA. So if you've never sold on Amazon FBA before, you've never done arbitrage, or you've never heard of replenishable products, then this is going to be an excellent video for you. If you have done these things in the past or you have heard them in the past, then it might be a great refresher for you to take a look at the opportunity as well as take a look at some of the basic fundamentals that go into being successful with this business. Uh, I've actually trained uh, or seen over 1,000 success stories come from the information that I've trained in my course and in my book. Um, and I'm going to give you the basics and the foundations in this video today. So I'm really excited to see some success stories come from even just this free content uh, as well. So uh, let's go ahead and get into it uh, because I know you all came here to see how to make your first $10,000 in sales as an Amazon seller. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into uh, the presentation that I have for you. Okay, uh, so as you can see, this is in a presentation format. So I apologize if you uh, don't like presentation formats, but I just wanted to give you all the information that I could think of. And the best way for me to do that is through a presentation um, to, to go through the foundations and also give you some examples of what um, we're gonna be looking at or what you'll be looking at to start your Amazon FBA business. Now, first, before we get into that, I wanted to show you the screenshot. This screenshot is from the first month where we crossed over $100,000 in sales in one month. And so that happened back in, I believe it was April of 2019. And we have consistently been uh, over that amount since April of 2019. Uh, we've actually gotten up to, I think I was about $195,000 in one month at one point in May of 2020, but we uh, consistently stay above the $100,000 per month. Um, now, what I also wanted to point out, as I mentioned earlier, there's been over a thousand success stories from this content. So if you want to see over 500 of them, you can actually head over to askjimmysmith.com forward slash success to see all of the success stories from it. So you know I'm not lying. This is not a scam. This isn't something I'm making up. Uh, actually, I believe I pulled it up. Let me just show you. Um, if you want to head over there yourself and see them all, there's over 500 success stories from different people through the groups uh, that, that have come through my information, um, through my course or my book. And so uh, you can really see a ton of success stories from you know, uh, $2,000 in uh, the first couple of months to $50,000. We've got some, there's one in here. It's kind of hard to find because I believe it's midway down. That's over $300,000 in a month, $860,000 in a year, et cetera. So I'm not lying. You can head over to see over 500 of these, um, you know, uh, success stories. Just wanted to point that out to you. Ask jimmysmith.com forward slash success. But anyway, let's get into uh, the other information. I just wanted to point out that, hey, I'm not scamming you. I'm not making this up. So um, so what are replenishables or replens? If you are familiar at all with Amazon arbitrage and you're looking at retail arbitrage or online arbitrage, replenishable products is what will allow you to scale that business. And so I'm going to talk about replens specifically. This isn't going to be a, um, you know, what is arbitrage uh, type presentation. You can actually look that up on, on my channel. I've got other videos on the different types of arbitrage, on hybrid arbitrage, on um, a bunch of different pieces of information. But what are replenishable products? So basically, the way to think about them is they are anything. There's no specific product category, but they sell consistently. So maybe it's, uh, you know, a lot of people like to think of uh, replenishable products as like toilet paper or toothpaste or food because it's things that we buy consistently as consumers, but what we care about are the things that sell consistently. So maybe I buy a hammer and, you know, John buys a hammer and, uh, you know, Nancy buys a hammer, et cetera. And each person is buying one hammer. They aren't buying multiple of these in their lifetime. They're just buying one. But as a seller, I have sold a hammer once a week for the last, you know, however many weeks. Uh, and so it's something that is going to sell consistently in your business. It's not always something that we as consumers buy consistently. So we're looking at these as replenishable products, things that we can go to the store, whether it's in-store or online, and we can buy over and over again. So some examples of this could be, so toilet paper 
absolutely one. I mean, that is a consumable product, but ping pong balls, not many people are buying a ton of different ping pong balls. Paper towels could work. Back, backpacks as well, uh, depending, you know, if you've got a child that goes to school, they probably get a new one each year. Um, but for the most of the majority of us, we aren't just buying backpacks every month, right? We're buying one a year um, or, you know, one for a decade, depending on uh, if you ever need the backpack. So we're looking for things that we can sell consistently, not things that are bought all the time. Right. Uh, so I have had replenishable products in um, in food. I've also had them in you know tools and and lawn and gardening supplies and sports and outdoors and arts and crafts and home and kitchen, etc. So there's tons of different places that you can uh, find replenishable products and send them in on your Amazon account. Uh, now, why replenishable products? Uh, besides the fact that it, it can help you to scale, it gives you consistency to your business. So you are then able to go out and find products, uh, whether it's at Walmart or Target or any regional or local store in your area, and you can buy them at full price and sell them on Amazon.com at um, you know a multiple of that price, typically three times the price of whatever you're buying it in store. Uh, now that will vary, but what we typically are doing are finding either two or three packs of these items, or we're doing variety packs where uh, you know maybe you get one flavor of one kind and one flavor of another, and you're you're putting them together and sending them to Amazon. Uh, typically, that's what we're going to see. But it does give you consistency to your business because if you're just out there doing arbitrage from a clearance perspective, and uh, you're just looking at uh, sales, deals, clearance products. Well, you're going to eventually run out of items that you can uh, shop for because those clearance deals are one-off deals typically. You're not going to be able to build a true solid business model um, with employees that you can scale because you're going to always have to be looking for new products um, in, in these clearance aisles and in the you know discounts and whatnot for the week, right? So with replenishable products, you're able to buy these at full price and sell them consistently. Um, and the store is replenishing them for you, right? As they sell out of their products, they replenish them, put them back on their shelves, and you're buying them at full price again. So it gives you consistency to your business. Uh, it is easier to outsource to future employees because you don't have to train them on how to shop or source for products. You can just give them a shopping list and says, hey, go buy these sauces, go buy this specific product, go buy you know this uh, type of... Um, I don't know, this type of arts and crafts supply or this type of uh, sporting goods supply, you can give them a list of items. So it's much easier to outsource instead of having to train them to source for new things through clearance items. Uh, it's also consistent in your prep and ship. Uh, so if you're out there uh, and you're prepping and shipping new products all the time, it's it's more difficult for your prep and ship team to have to deal with new types of products and new ways to prep and ship different items. This allows you and allows them to be able to see uh, these products consistently come in, uh, which makes it a lot faster and more streamlined from a prep and ship scenario to send into Amazon uh, FBA. Uh, there's also less turnover in your replenishable products. Like I said, with the clearance and the deals and the discounts, you're constantly having to find new things. Where with replens, we've had some for years. We've had some for a month that end up falling off, but they are still much more consistent with less turnover than if you were doing this from a clearance or deal standpoint. And then they are more reliable. You can just, uh, it's a lot easier to be able to rely on your business to know that it will continue uh, to grow uh, as you continue to uh, you know, put more into this business model because they are reliable. They are things you're buying at full price, not at discounts. Uh, you're able to rely on those products a lot more than if you were doing clearance items. Now, some tools needed to find replans, and these are just the basic tools. So there's essentials, the two essentials. One is the Amazon seller app, which is free. So you don't have to pay for that. It comes with your amazon.com seller um, account. Uh, and then the other one is a Keepa.com subscription. That's about $17 per month. But you'll see why, as we go through the rest of this presentation, why that's so important. Um, and I've actually done videos on Keepa on this YouTube channel. So you can check that out as well. This is a mini Keepa tutorial. Uh, you can see all of that information on the channel if you'd like to check that out as well to get more in-depth information. And I'll briefly go over some of that uh, today. So how do you find these replants, right? I'm talking about replants. You've never done this before. How do you find these things? Uh, well, first and foremost, you want to go slowly. You don't want to just try to speed through your sourcing. You don't want to try to run, run through a bunch of products. You want to go as slowly as possible. And I know that's the, probably the most difficult part for most people is actually being patient in this process, but you need to go slowly through it. 
The next thing is you are not going to be scanning UPCs. So if you've been doing clearance arbitrage for a while, then you're probably used to taking the Amazon seller app, scanning the barcode and seeing if it's selling for more money on Amazon. Well, you don't want to be doing that because you're going to miss out on a lot of the hidden treasures that are on the Amazon platform that you could be selling um, if you uh, weren't scanning these UPCs. Essentially, the way to think about it, anytime you scan a UPC, that's like you saying, okay, I want to go and find this product on Amazon and it has to be this exact string of numbers for me to sell on or to, to buy it. So if I were to say, hey, um, I, I need to buy this uh, pack of gum right here. Um, well, what's the UPC? No Amazon consumer is going to amazon.com and typing in the UPC on a product. What they're doing is they're going to amazon.com and they're typing in icebreakers, ice cubes, gum right? Uh, that's what they're looking for. They aren't looking for 0, 1, 2, 5, 7, 8, 9. They're looking for icebreakers, ice cubes, gum. So you don't want to scan UPCs because that is the most specific way to search for anything on the Amazon platform. Uh, so you want to type in everything that you see to the Amazon seller app or browser. So I say app or browser, because if you're in store doing retail arbitrage, it's going to be the seller app. Um, if you're at home doing online arbitrage, it'll most likely be the amazon.com uh, browser, just the regular search uh, functionality there. But you want to type in everything that you see in the store. Uh, so if you're looking at an aisle with a bunch of gum, you're going to type in all the different flavors, you're going to type in the brands, you're going to type in the types of products, right? Um, if you are online, you're going to be typing in the uh, basically whatever categories you're in uh, on that website. So if you're at Lowe's.com and you're looking in uh, hand tools where well, you're going to start typing in, you know, Phillips screwdriver, um, you know, a Phillips wrench, right? You're going to look for these things specifically um, by name, because that's what people are searching for on the Amazon platform. So as a seller, we need to search for it that way as well. Next, uh, how would you find this on Amazon to purchase? I have kind of already said this, but this is the way I like to think about it. Whenever I'm in a store or I'm online looking for products to sell, I try to think about this. How would I be trying, or how would I search for this? How would I find this on Amazon if I were trying to just buy it for myself? Uh, I don't want to get super creative and try to add in all these keywords because I'm an Amazon seller and I know people like to add weird keywords. I want to be pretty basic and type in uh, a pretty strict formula, which we'll get to uh, right now. So the brand name is typically what people are going to type in. So if I'm looking at this gum, it'll be icebreakers. So, all right, icebreakers, the type of product, gum. I could just do icebreakers gum, but this is technically ice cubes gum. They have different types. So maybe I type in icebreakers, ice cubes, gum. So that would be probably the first search that I would do if I was looking for this specific type of gum. Uh, the next thing that you could add is size of product. Um, in this case, I don't have the size on here anymore. Um, so I'm not sure what it is, but let's say it was, you know, three ounces or something. Uh, size of product, three ounces. Uh, or 100 count or 50 count, you could add that in there as well. You could add in the flavor like peppermint in this case. Uh, so it really just depends on what you're looking at, but you want to keep it as basic as possible. Um, if I were truly trying to find that on the Amazon platform, I would probably type in icebreakers gum. So I would start there. Um, if I was trying to get more specific, it would be icebreakers, ice cubes, gum, or icebreakers, peppermint gum. You want to think about it in those terms, not in a UPC term. You don't want to get super um, specific either, where you're just typing in the exact bit of everything, icebreakers, ice cubes, peppermint, uh, natural and artificial flavoring, gum, you know, like you don't want to get that specific where, you know, some of those words might be in the listing. But if you get too specific, you're going to alienate the other listings that are out there that could be really good for your, for your uh, Amazon account. Start broad, then get more specific. So I would start with icebreakers gum, and then I would slowly start adding in things like ice cubes or peppermint uh, or the ounces. And then some examples, uh, which we already talked about the gum, but aim toothpaste, six ounces you could start with, uh, or you could do bounty paper towels. Again, very broad, and then you could get more specific from there. You can add words at the end of it, like bundle, set, pack, or variety. So uh, for instance, things with flavors might have a lot of variety packs. So I could type in icebreakers, variety, pack, gum, or icebreakers, gum, variety. And maybe there's a listing with peppermint and cinnamon uh, or other flavors as well. Uh, same with bundle. If you add bundle, maybe I get some gum bundled with some mints, right? Two different types of products, but they, um, they, they 
go together um, in from an Amazon listing standpoint. Or if we're looking at toothpaste, it might be AIM toothpaste bundle. And so you might see a toothpaste with a toothbrush that are bundled together. Um, so adding words like that will help you to find more products as well. Uh, it also helps you to find hidden listings, things that wouldn't be found if you were just searching by UPC. So that's what I mean by hidden listings. They're hidden to the, con to the, the seller if you are scanning by UPC but they are not hidden to the consumer who's typing in these words um, because the UPCs many times will be wrong uh, or they uh, got an exemption so they didn't have to put a UPC with the product. Whatever it is, scanning a UPC is the worst way to go about uh, doing arbitrage on Amazon. And then uh, it's you can also use, there's a picture scan feature in your seller app. Uh, whenever you click on the uh, scan button, it's basically a little camera on the top right of your seller app. Um, app and uh, you can picture scan either the label or the type of product and it can pull up other listings for you as well. It's a little bit more, not advanced, it's pretty basic to do that, but it's something that I don't actually do that often anymore. I typically will use um, just the words that I'm looking for on Amazon. If I'm really having trouble finding something for it, then I will picture scan it because sometimes it's got some weird title and weird keywords in there that I would have never thought of. So the picture scan feature can be helpful if you've got the Amazon seller app. Uh, so let's look at some examples. <clears throat> So in this example with AIM toothpaste, uh, if you've got an iPhone, uh, the Amazon seller app at this time does this on an iPhone only. It doesn't do it on Android. Now that may change in the future, but um, I love that it shows AIM toothpaste and then it gives you a list of other things people have typed in. So AIM toothpaste gel, AIM toothpaste kids, extreme clean, et cetera. So that kind of gives you a list of things that you can be looking for in the store if you've got an iPhone. If not, it's not necessary. You can just you know go through and do it the normal way, but it is nice to see that this is an option on an iPhone and it gives you some more things to think about like cinnamon, uh, um, towards the bottom or original or, you know, prime pantry you wouldn't use because that's just the basics. That's an Amazon um, way of selling it. But uh, ultimately this gives you a lot of different options. And you can see even Amazon suggesting search ways to search for these items that uh, meet the uh, definitions that I showed back here of the brand name, type of product, size of product, et cetera. So if we look at this, we've got uh, AIM toothpaste, and then gel, kids, extreme clean, six ounce tube, tubes, ultra mint gel, cinnamon, original, et cetera. So it actually uh, corroborates what I'm telling you on how to search for these things. So whenever you search for that, or if you were to search for like glutino, gluten-free pretzels, you're gonna see a bunch of different options pull up. Uh, and yeah, it's great to see that first off, there's this 14.1 ounce bag, and then there's an eight ounce bag, and then there's a 12 pack of the 14.1 ounce bag. So the reason you want to keep it broad is because you're going to see more specific things like this. If I were to type in glutino gluten-free pretzels 14.1, well, this eight ounce bag wouldn't show up most likely. It's going to just show these 14.1s. So if I were to keep it much more broad and just say the brand name and then the type of product that it is, then I'm going to get a bunch of different listings um, like a single pack or an eight ounce or a pack of 12 that maybe I wouldn't have thought of elsewhere. Or elsewhere. So that is extremely helpful and hopefully gives you a good example of how to search for these things on your Amazon seller app. So the next thing you're going to want to do is check Keepa. And I mentioned the Keepa.com subscription earlier being about $17 per month. Also, I do have other videos on this YouTube channel for a Keepa training, but ultimately um, I'll give you a couple pieces of information, just some basic stuff so that you know what we're looking at in the, the following slides. Uh, but you want to check Keepa next. That's absolutely what you need to do after you find some products to look at. You want to look for dips in your green sales rank line. So that's going to show you sales. There are three different lines that you really need to look at. But the first one is a green sales rank line on a Keepa chart, which I'll show you in a minute. And that allows you to see uh, that it's sold regularly, um, that it's selling a lot, or if it's selling slowly or not selling at all. And you'll see that here in a second. Uh, the next thing that you want to look at is the buy box price. You need to check to see if the buy box price is consistent. And you'll see that by either the pink lines or pink dots um, that are on the Keepa graph. Uh, what that's going to do is it's going to show you if something's more reliable from a price perspective. Right? You want something that maybe fluctuates between uh, $15 and $20, not something that fluctuates between $10 and $50. Right? <laughs> you want to make sure that it's very reliable in the price points. Uh, the next thing is that it's easier to ensure your success in a long-term replan. You can see farther back by like a year or even much longer, you can see the entirety of 
the uh, listing's history if you click to see all the data. So it's easier to ensure success in a long-term replan by looking at the buy box price staying consistent for a year or longer um, in most cases, or in many cases, not most cases. Uh, and so let's look at some product examples. So I went with AIM toothpaste. I have no idea if this is profitable or not. I don't know what it costs, but I wanted to show you what it looks like. So we clicked on a listing. Uh, you can see that it's a cool mint gel pack of six. They're six ounces. So you would take one of them, you put them into a bundle of six items and you'd send them into Amazon. It's got seven reviews. Um, I don't care about the stars, but it has seven total. It's a higher rank in health and personal care, but it at least is selling. We know it's selling because it's got a sales rank and because there are reviews. Um, and you can see that it's $17 for this. Now, I don't know how much AIM costs. Um, let's say it was a dollar a bottle. Well, if that's the case, then you would make uh, about $2.49. But if it's more expensive and you would be unprofitable, then you wouldn't check Keepa. However, let's say that you can buy this for a dollar a bottle and you're fine making $2.49 in profit on this product, uh, well, then you'd want to check Keepa next. And this is what the Keepa chart would show you. So this green sales rank line, which I mentioned earlier, is the first thing you want to check out. You can see it's going up and down very consistently. As it drops, that is showing you that ultimately um, it made at least one sale with each drop that happens in that chart. Um, it could be two or three or five that happens, but we know at least one sale occurred with each drop. And so since it's fluctuating up and down consistently, that means it's selling consistently. The next thing you want to look at is this buy box. Um, now, in this picture, these are little buy box circles. They've changed it to be a buy box line. So it's going to look a little different, but basically the same. Uh, but these buy box uh, indicators are showing that it pretty much sells around $15 in the buy box. Uh, consistently, it has gone up to about, I would assume, $18. If you're looking at this graph between 15 and 20, I would assume that's about 18. Um, and you can see that it fluctuates. But for the most part, it's a fairly stable price over the last year. Uh, and then you can also see here that the sellers have gone up. So this is the third thing you want to look at. The sellers going up is kind of problematic because it could indicate that in the future, the uh, price will start to go down if there aren't enough sales happening. Um, but this isn't a huge increase, so that wouldn't bother me at all. Also, I have this set to the last year. Uh, you can set it to three months or you can set it to all. I typically like to look at the last year. So in this case, uh, Amazon also, this orange shaded area, Amazon came onto the graph or onto this listing for a very brief time period, probably about a month or a, a few weeks maybe, um, and they sold out and they haven't been back on. So this doesn't scare me. If Amazon was orange shaded this whole way, I probably would stay away from the product. But if this is something that's profitable, I'd probably test it. I would buy it and send it in and see if it sells at a profitable point because I'd want to make sure that, uh, you know, before I buy a hundred of these things that I can send in three or four and they're going to sell at a profitable spot. So, um, and by the way, never buy a hundred of something. We always slowly and gradually increase our buy amounts uh, just to make sure that we aren't overbuying a product that's going to drop in the future. But you can see that it does sell regularly. The price is fairly stable. If you can be profitable at this $15 price point, uh, then that is definitely a good indicator. And the number of sellers going up isn't uh, huge, a huge problem because they do drop at different points. Um, and so that at least shows that they are selling out a little bit. So in the next example, we've got this green briar dog food bowls. Now these cost a dollar a piece. So it would be $4 for this set um, because I know that these are from Dollar Tree. Again, there are reviews, which is nice to see, and it does have a sales rank. Um, and at $10.11, you'd have $5.31 of proceeds. So minus your $4, you'd make $1.31. So it's kind of a lower uh, return on your investment. It's a low below 40%. But again, I wanted to show you this Keepa graph. You can see here the green sales rank line fluctuates tremendously. So it's selling a ton. You can also see that the price, though, is a lot more volatile. So it started at the beginning of the year around 15 dropped down to, I assume, about 12.50. It went back up, and then it started to drop down heavily as well, down to closer to this $10 price point. Um, you can also see that the new sellers, they were fluctuating beautifully here, but then they started to really come onto the listing, um, and that's problematic. You can actually see as the sellers came on, the, the price started to drop with it. Um, and then as the sellers started to drop out and sell off, 
then the price went back up, which is kind of interesting to see that relationship consistently happen on these Keepa graphs. And then as the sellers came back on then the price dropped again. So this I'd probably avoid because it's at a higher um, price right now, unless you're okay making this lower amount of money, but you can ultimately see that it does sell well. The price is kind of fluctuating uh, heavily uh, and the sellers have gone up and down uh, quite a bit. Uh, so I, I might test this one. It's kind of a, a coin toss. It would probably, or it would most likely sell and uh, make you a little bit of money, but uh, you are running some risk here that there's going to be more sellers that jump on this listing. Okay, so how do you go from zero to $10,000 a month? As the, uh, the title of this video says, how to make your first $10,000 as an Amazon seller. Uh, this is what I wanted to show you from a numbers perspective, how this can be a lot easier than you might um, you know, think that it would be. Uh, we typically will see a $15 average selling price in, our, um, in each product that we sell. Uh, so that's our average. Sometimes it's $10 per unit. Sometimes it's uh, $30 in a unit that we're selling, but we average about $15 across the board of all of our inventory. Um, we also average about 10 sales per month per product if we're purchasing properly. We might see one or two sales on one item. We might see zero on some items. Or we might see 100 or plus, uh, 100 or more on some other items. So we average around 10 per item, uh, 10 sales per item. Now, um, as I said, uh, some are over 30 a month, some are two per month, but our return on our investment is around 70% ROI. So for every dollar we spend, we're making 70 cents on top of that dollar. So if we spend $10 on products, we're typically making $7 in profit after all is said and done, sending into, it into Amazon, et cetera. However, we will go down to about 25% on fast moving inventory. And when we started, 40% was our minimum return on investment. So we wouldn't, if we were spending $10 on a product, we didn't want to make less than $4 profit um, on that item whenever we first started. So if you're at zero, I would suggest that being your minimum at 40%. Uh, now let's look at the $10,000 math with that average selling price. It will take $10,000 divided by $15 per sale. That's 667 sales per month. And I know that sounds like a lot, um, but if you average about 10 sales per month per um, replan, that means you can take 667 sales divided by the 10, which means you only need 67 replans, which might sound like a lot to you depending on where you're at, but it is actually very uh, simple and doable to do this. Um, within two to three months, if you have the capital to buy the amount of products that you need and you're finding 30 replans per month, that's one per day uh, that sell with that same velocity, that's all it'll take you is two to three months to hit a $10,000 sales month. And again, our ROI averaged 70%. Even now, doing over $100,000 a month, we average 70% return on our investment. So it does take some time. It does take some effort, but you can get to this $10,000 per month sales level within two to three months if you have the right amount of capital and you're finding the right products and following the trainings, right? Uh, so hopefully this is something that helps you and gives you some motivation to get there because we've seen over 1,000 success stories from the information that I presented here. Uh, we've you know, and you can see over 500 of them, as I mentioned earlier, at askjimmysmith.com forward slash success. So um, really uh, excited to see what you can do with this information. Uh, if you'd like more help, I've got it on my website. I at least wanted to show you that askjimmysmith.com forward slash sell dash on dash Amazon. Also have a best-selling book on Amazon uh, called Side Hustle to Full-Time Income. It also comes with a free jumpstart course if you do get that uh, book as well, uh, which goes over some of this information, but much more in depth, um, you know, and, and how to do online arbitrage, retail arbitrage, hybrid arbitrage, uh, Keepa, all of that kind of stuff. I go much more in depth and it's free, but you can get it uh, with the book Side Hustle to Full-Time Income. So hopefully this is something that, uh, that helped you, that blessed you, that you'll be able to use this information to grow your business, that you'll be able to go from zero to $10,000 per month, like so many have done before and are continuing to uh, be able to grow and scale their businesses. Um, and actually the course that I did was how to go from zero to $100,000 per month. That's what the, the book is about as well. So hopefully that's something, if, if you're looking to scale it to a full-time income, it's something that you can check that out as well. Um, so thank you so much for watching this. I know it was a little bit of a longer one and also a presentation style, which can kind of be difficult uh, for some people, but uh, hopefully this was enough information to excite you and get you going. You can go start looking for your first replens now, go look around your house, find things like this icebreakers gum or find things 
things like, uh, I don't know, crayons or school supplies or whatever it is and start looking on Amazon for in the ways that I taught in this video. Uh, and you'll be surprised at the things that uh, you'll be able to find on there at, at a higher price and maybe two or three packs or variety packs or bundles, whatever it is. Um, really excited to, to get your input on this. So please comment below. Let me know uh, if you've done this before, if you like this method, if you've got further questions on it. Obviously, I can't go into everything um, because there's so much that can go into it, but this is the basics of what you can use to take your business from zero to $10,000 per month. So please comment below. Let me know your thoughts. Also, I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe to this channel. I put out content regularly, uh, tutorials on different things and a bunch of different stuff that I do on this channel. So I'd appreciate it if you like, share, subscribe, uh, do all of that stuff that everyone asks for uh, on YouTube. So thank you so much for being here. And I hope that you have a blessed rest of your day.